So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So what I have here today is the 2023 BMW 218i business. So this is the base model of the 3 series here in the Philippines. So sitting above this is the BMW 218i Sport. I have a full review of that, link of that will be in the description down below. So being the base model now, first impressions like seeing the pictures online, this is literally way better than the sport for me for some reason i mean look at the look of this yes it's maybe less aggressive without the kits here and there but this is for me like the tour look of bmw just in my opinion only and the ground clearance now i think it's still the same at 142 millimeters but without the kit i think this is a little bit higher than that of the sport so i assume the sports ground clearance was 135 millimeters with the kit this looks exactly the same with the 318 i touring coming soon to my channel back here with this business model so there are a lot of differences between these sport variants so of course you don't have the kits here and there you don't have the m aerodynamic packages albeit too without the m badges here on the side of the vehicle and you get different sets of wheels too compared to the much more five or six spoke aggressive look of the 218 i sport and here on the side profile looks somewhat the same albeit the window trims here now are all aluminum compared to the gloss black of the 218i Sport. So we'll get to the rear in a bit. So tying this 218i business, well, it's exactly the same too with the 218i Sport. So like with the 318i Sport, this one is a 2-liter twin scroll turbocharged 4-cylinder engine with 156 horsepower and 250 Nm of torque. So this one is mated to an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. So the acceleration time is more or less the same. 0 to 100 km per hour is done in 8.4 seconds. And like too with the 318i Sport, at least they didn't remove this from that variant too. You get an active kidney grill here too. So here now at the rear of the 318i business. So I will keep forgetting to mention this. Like with the 318i Sport, there are puddle lamps just below the side mirror. And back here in the rear, you still get the sexiest BMW tail lights in my opinion. So unlike with that variant too, this is much more like it too because there's no like a fake vent but it housed the reflector but for this business model it's just plain this is more like it and you get real exhaust tips on either side and the reverse camera over here and like with all three series you get an electronic tailgate so the boot space remains exactly the same at 480 liters which is one of the most spacious in its class so you get a cubby space here on the right and that storage here on the left side and underfloor storage you already know my history with this underfloor storage, so I won't open that anymore. So like two, with all three seats, you get levers over here to fold the rear seats to further increase the boot space. So yeah, that's about it with the engine, the exterior, and the boot of this 318i business. Let's check out the interior. Right, that was a fail. I didn't sit in the driver's side due to bad lighting, so... This is the interior of the t 8 i business. So, very few subtle changes here only done in the interior. So, like here on the air conditioning events, it's now all gloss black compared to that of the t 8 i Sport. I'll just show a clip here because I forgot how that looked like too. But yet again, everything here, yeah, mostly the same. So, you get the squeegee steering wheel yet again. We have cruise control functions on the left side and volume adjustments and infotainment buttons on the right side. But what caught my attention immediately with this business model, I thought they'll remove it from the sport variant but this still has paddle shifters so I cannot wait to drive this. So you still have your digital instrument cluster. You can do a lot of stuff yet again and you have your BMW iDrive 8 infotainment system. You can do more stuff yet again the response time is very very good the navigation pretty smooth you have your service requirements my favorite ever feature from all bmws and then the reverse camera exactly the same too it's pretty much the same here below the air conditioning vents you have some controls at least for all of the three seats unlike with the x1 and upper bmw suvs then further down below you have your wireless charging pad usb port 12 volt socket and two cup holders with my big water jug and either side of the door cards too they're a little bit different too with the 318 i sport but at least they kept the ambient lighting so which is a good thing too so you get cubby spaces cup holders too on each side my big water jug just fits and on the left side of the dashboard you get your light controls and an extra compartment just down below and then here 
this side feels weird glove box okay pretty good there's a light inside too and then here center console box the space is decent you as well get a usb-c port and a halogen light and then here back in the center console here's a lot more gloss black yet again but this one at least has a mix of physical buttons unlike with the bmw x1 all new bmw x1 rather yet again the controls are very easy you can click whatever you want to drive modes and then your swivel for the infotainment system and then above here you have your halogen lights yet again sun visor vanity mirror with light on either side remember i'm on the passenger side don't extend sadly and what else oh yeah the seats too this is the biggest difference too with the business model yeah this is more on the durable side of things but yet again still leans more on the sportier side of things but i noticed there's i think less bolstering than that of the t18 i sport van but if i wanted to buy a bmw tc for the long term i think i'll go for this because it's a little bit more comfortable yeah not much as pleasing to the eyes as the t18 i sport but this is the one i would go for still and like with all three series whoops I was just about to release the Thai support like all BMWs too. And yeah, that's pretty much here in front. Almost exactly the same apart from few materials here and there. So yeah, in the back too, same story. Door cards exactly the same. Still keeps the ambient light. You have smaller cubby spaces now and cup holders on each side. My water jug yet again just about fits. Then you have two net storages behind both front seats. And then you have your air conditioning vents along with your air conditioning controls down below with two USB-C ports as you can see here you have a central armrest with two pop-out cup holders fits again my water jug that's what I like too with these three series at least they fit the big type of water jug so space there in the back exactly the same like all three series feet room new excellent there's also well ambient light on the feet and my head you just all right I'm 5'4 but it's a sedan it's forgivable however though if I sit in the middle yeah, the transmission tunnel is second biggest compared only with Alfa Romeo. But then again, you can put your feet either side and you sit still comfortably there in the middle. Take note that the middle seat is a little bit harder than usual than in the left or right side of the seats. But it's still doable. Oh yeah, too. I just remember now just looking at these seat belts. They don't get the M color stitching anymore. But it's a small nitpick only. So yeah, that's a quick walk around tour here in the interior of the t18 i business let's go for a drive so diving the t18 i business unexpectedly having driven the t18 i sport already a few months ago so as well this is still and telescopic as you can see and going over bumps and humps you won't have such an issue compared with the t18 i sport because with the absence of the kit so Knowing this does not have the case, nothing's protruding on the bumper. Yeah, you'll feel a little bit safer here. NVH diving dynamics, I can tell it's already the same like with the sport van. I mean, it's the same car, but minus all the few gubbins here in the interior and the kit. That's pretty much it. I'm really glad they kept the paddle shifter. So let's try it out later on in the back part of its Sentries. Okay, that's the seat belt. Warning, remember, miss kasi ayaw mag seat belt, the joke lang. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> so, yet again, going back to the iDrive 8 system, like what I said earlier in the showroom. Yeah, exactly the same complaint like the one in the sport. Yeah, and the M4, let's not forget. Yeah, I have to control everything here in the infotainment system from the air conditioning vent. Yeah, like there's no controls here, it's just only for the heating function only. And then here, the uneven part of its entries. NVH more or less is the same. There's a little bit tire noise, but yet again, it's not so bad. Then again, like with the T18 i Sport, everything here. Yeah, it's much better than that of BMW X1 that I just reviewed. Yeah, there are physical buttons for your drivers. You don't have to scroll it all the way here anymore in the infotainment system. So we were just in comfort mode. So sport mode, let's go. And then, yeah, there's another way of engaging sport mode, manual mode here. So go back to the toggle shifter. Yeah, just pull it down to S and then yeah, you're manual mode already. It's so weird that you can put it in automatic mode, whatever driving mode you are in. Anyway, so here sport mode oh yeah shifts up and down when my command and it will automatically up shift like every other bmw but doing this is done it's so planted yes <laughs> right. 
hip performance is exactly the same. So yet again, zero to 100 kilometers per hour is done in 8.4 seconds. Tuning ko mo and relax a bit. So, oh yeah, let's try that voice command since it was so good in the X1. What is my fuel consumption reading? Please try again. There, see? Okay, there, there. This is what I meant in the X1. The voice command here is not as accurate for some reason compared with the X1. Okay, let's. Right, let's try again, turn it off, and then on. What is my fuel consumption? The current average consumption since the start of the journey is 43.2 liters per 100 kilometers. You are already consuming less as you are using the Echo Pro driving mode. You can ask me, how can I reduce my consumption at any time? If you would like to find out more information on this. Thank you. So, there you go. I did notice one thing compared with the Exxon with this iDrive 8 of the 3 series. So, it worked when I said fuel consumption only. But in the X1, it read everything. What is my fuel consumption reading? So, it didn't read the word reading for some reason. Hmm. Anyways, so back here with the 3 series. In the twisty bit, yeah. Sport mode, eco mode, comfort mode, yeah. The steering response is always been shared that's what i love with twisties but tends up to wait more if you go to sport mode comparing to eco and comfort mode so yeah handling wise it's still among one of the best out there and like what i said too in my tier and eight i sport review this is still the benchmark luxury sedan and i think for this tier and eight i business comparing with the sport brand this is the literally the new benchmark sedan now because yeah this business model i think this should have been here in the first place compared with the sport ride right? because it's got everything you need there's only a few differences and let's not take away the price of these two the t 8 i business cost 3 million five hundred and ninety thousand pesos a whopping 200 thousand pesos less than the sport model okay there are some who will cater like uh this does not look sporty anymore compared with the sport brand hence the name i completely agree with that but weirdly enough since i'm a sporty kind of person i prefer the conservative look of this t 8 i business yes i don't get the nice wheels i don't get the nice kit but it's still a bmw that's all i need so let's go back to sport mode before i send my sayonara here at bmw auto alley there will be one more special card that i saved the best for last so here sport mode oh my god i love diving this thing ah okay and the brakes sharp as ever and as well, like all BMWs, in manual mode, it will automatically upshift even though in manual mode. Right. Oh, it put itself back to automatic even though it's in manual. Hmm. Anyways, so, yeah, what else to say about this t 18 i business? I gotta say it's much more worth it than the Sport Riot. That's just my two cents. So, I'd like to thank everyone again here at BMW Auto Ali and to Miss Nesli over here for making these reviews possible. So, these are our contact details. So, check out all the new BMWs they have here at BMW Auto Ali because it's worth your sheer driving pleasure. I gotta be honest. One of the best driving machines ever. I, I love all what I've driven today. So, XT20 D business and surprisingly, I'll ne I'm not still shutting up about it, the BMW X1. So, very curious case now. What would they go for? X1 or this one? Hmm, interesting. I came from a sedan. I still love a sedan, but it's nice too with the BMW X1. But knowing this has paddles, I'll answer that on another time. So, yet again, hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with one more BMW review coming right up. And thank you guys all for watching. Bye-bye.